Welcome to Thursday, week five. And we are, oops, I'm at the wrong spot. Um, today, we are taking a little break from moving forward. We have been working in the map science category, going through polygons, perimeter, and area, talking about areas, length, times, width, and how you can draw rectangles for everything from place value multiplying problems to word problems to even algebra, if you knew that. We talked about circles last time that didn't really have time for example problems. We haven't done anything yet with surface area or volume of prisms. So, but rather than doing more with circles and three dimension, dimensional shapes, in the syllabus, there were some handouts that were used in other versions of math level C at LCC. So I took them from the other teachers, uh, Moodle page and thought, hey, we can do these too. So uh, some of you said you wanted to work on them between Tuesday and Thursday so that you could get a head start and show off. And if you haven't looked at them yet, that's okay. We'll just sort of take turns calling things out. I can be your scribe and write things on the jam board and we'll work on these together. The Moodle site I got this from, if you care, is just the basic one that Minu made for level C math. Have any of you taken level C math before and have actually been through this Moodle site? No. So it looks like a Moodle class, right? There's your things. The textbook they use, if you go to our class library page for open educational resources, OERs, whoops, I'm not sharing my screen. That was terrible. Um, I'm pointing at all these things as I'm talking and you have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, back up, let me start over. So, okay, there we go. So welcome to class, there we go. Um, in mad science, there's the table of contents. We're not doing circles or prisms today. We'll save that for later. We're not in a rush and we'll take a break instead. And on the syllabus in between the foldouts, there are four handouts that we wanna try to make sure that we're not skipping anything that other level C math classes are doing. If you look at Minu's class, then there it is, la la la. Um, and it has different activities, right? Things that look like worksheets. And the textbook it uses is one that we have also access to, if you like this kind of thing. If you go to our class library page, the last section is open educational resources, the OERs. And the one that the other level C classes are using is arithmetic for college students. So you open that and then you go read now. And unfortunately, it's just this giant 417 page PDF file. So um, it has all sorts of stuff. Some of the pictures are nice. Um, I don't think it works as well as well organized or colorfully or nice descriptions as my website, which is why I bother to make my own website and not just use this. But there we go. If you like it, I will put it in the chat and you can see how that book explains things. Anyway, so bye bye. So we have these four handouts. The first one is something about recipes. We have three different recipes. They have somewhat overlapping ingredients. And we want to make all of the recipes for 30 people. Some of the recipes start out too small, like the banana bread is only 10. And some of the rest, one recipe starts out too big. So the chocolate chip cookies makes 60. I'm not sure why we don't just make it like it is and eat half the cookies ourselves, but we're going to make only half the recipe. So I put that on the jam board and we can look at each of the three recipes, figure out how to scale it up or down to make the right amount and then add up all the things because they'll have flour in every recipe and so on. So that's the first handout. The second handout is a bunch of order of operation problems. So some of these are either more complicated or just written differently. Like in number four, when you have something just 
rubbing up against parentheses, that means multiplying, even if there's no multiplying symbol. So I want to make sure that we can do these. And I'm assuming whoever prepared this um, knows that it matches the GED test, and they might write things like this too. And again, if you go far enough in the Jamboard, I've copy and pasted all these so we can work on them there. The other two are geometry. We should have time for at least one of the others, maybe all four. So this one is just one project. You have a house and you want to talk about reseeding it with grass and making a fence and how much of stuff would you need and how much would it cost. And the last one is a review of the areas and perimeter formulas and then some nice examples that go into a little bit of trickiness that we didn't do in class last time. So these are certainly worth spending some time doing. So we can do either of both of those two if we have time. So that's the plot for today. But before I jump into new things, then if I go back to our mad science, are there homework questions that people want me to start with? I'm good. Actually, yeah. Um... I'm stuck on number 10 in percentage, okay. the 10 exercises. Uh, da, da, da. Let's do that one. I'm going to shrink just a little bit so I can copy and paste it. Make it wide again. And I'm going to go way to the end of the jam board just so it doesn't get in the way with other stuff. I should label this too. So this is mad science. And percentages. Okay, I'm going to draw the same picture I ended class with last time, and then we'll work through all of the steps this time since we've had another couple of days to work on this. So we have an investment of 6,000. And it decreases in value by 2%. So it's going to go down at 2%. And we know that 2% is going to be also a dollar amount. We don't know what the dollar amount is immediately but there should be some number we can put in there as how many dollars it goes down. And then it will get to some smaller number. We can fill in that blank once we know. Then it's going to go down again by 5%. And again, that percent, we could also understand it as a dollar amount. And then once we take away that, we'll get to an even smaller number. And then this is where our final answer will be. Is my plan good for everyone before we actually start with the numbers? Yes. Okay. That's for me. So we ask a few different things. I'm just going to label them like part A. You don't have to. So first we want 2% of 6,000. I'm not gonna get that chart out about is this a percent change or a percent of, we've done that a bunch. Hopefully it makes sense by now. So this is a percent of, I want to take the of and change it to multiply. I want to change the percent and make it a decimal. What decimal does 2% turn into? Point zero 0.02. Yeah. If you've been doing homework, you can probably just look at that. If you are not quick yet, then go ahead and write it out the long way. That we're going left out of percent. So two scoots left, 0 0.02. 
So 0 0.02 times 6,000 is going to be 120. So that's this green amount here. Good so far? Yeah. So I started at 6,000, $120 went away. I'm sad. So I have left 6,000 minus 120. So now we're at part B. And if I write 5,800, that's going to be too small. I didn't take away a whole 200, so I have to put 80 back. So 5,880. Then we repeat all that. So now we're over here on part C, trying to fill in the second green blank. And we want 5% of 5,880. So we will again translate this. If you need to, keep writing RIPLOP. We're going left out of percent, so two to the left. I'm not sure what this is, so I will grab my calculator. 0 0.05 times 5880294. So that's the number that goes in my second green spot on my picture. Almost done. So now I'm finally over here. And at this hour of the evening, I'm not going to trust my mental math. 5586. How does that compare to what you did, Emily? That's <clears throat> that's good. I just I missed the last step, so I was confused. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. I'm going to say do 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 do. A little more art, so people looking after class can see what's happening better. Any other questions before we start those handouts? I should ask Ruthie, how do you blur the background in Zoom like? I went into the settings and there's like a blur setting on there that I can do that. Blur setting. I don't have pictures, so I figure I use that. Studio effects beta. I don't want to figure that out. My picture is off to the side because if I move my camera right in front of me, you can see where my wife has her computer set up. And I don't want to have you just watching her back the whole class as she plays World of Warcraft and record that on YouTube forever. So there we go. I should look into blur. Okay. Do, do, do.
So we're scaling these recipes. This was just the overview page. I want to have 30 people. So how do I adjust this recipe? Would you just triple it? Yeah. Three. I do a times three here to make 30. And so I have to put times three everywhere. Some of these are really easy and some are not. So we have three times three is nine bananas. That one's easy. I have a third a cup of melted butter and then times three. So if I have a third three times, that's just a whole cup. And the fact it's melted doesn't matter because I'm just making a shopping list. If I have two thirds a cup of sugar times three, so let me draw that and then we'll do it the other way. So there's two thirds once, two thirds twice, two thirds three times. Then what I can do is take this one and stick it there. And this one and stick it there. And I'm going to get two holes that are all filled in. So if you like pictures, then you can just say that this is going to be two cups of sugar. If you don't like the pictures, because not everyone does, then you can do two thirds times three. How do I multiply fractions by a whole number? I have to put the whole number over one, so it looks like a fraction two. Then I will do some canceling. Three divided by three is one. Multiply across the top. I don't need common denominators, I'm only multiplying. So two times one is two, one times one is one, and two over one is two. So I get the same answer. One egg times three is three eggs. Three quarters teaspoon vanilla. Okay, your turn. I'm doing three quarters. I'm multiplying it by three. Over one. Third over one. Can I cancel those threes? No. No, they're both on top. To cancel, it has to be one on top and one on top. So I just multiply. Three times three is nine. Four times one is four. So nine fourths. That's an awkward amount. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not worrying about it for two reasons. One, that I have two more recipes that I'm playing with. So if they have some vanilla, I'll want to know the total. And maybe the total won't be an awkward thing like nine fourths. It's also true that I'm trying to make a shopping list. I'm just going to wind up buying a little bottle of vanilla no matter what we get. So who cares? Anyway. OK, one half teaspoon of baking soda times three. So that's going to be three halves. At this point, the half is just like a label. And one and a half cups of flour three times. Do you want a picture for that one? No one wants a picture. Okay, so I'll take the one and a half times three. 
I'll take the one and a half and make it three halves. One times two is one, plus another one up top is three halves times three over one. On top, three over three times three is nine. Two times one is two. So we get nine halves plus one. If you like mixed numbers, then maybe you would have thought in your head, a one and a half and another one and a half makes three. And then another one will be four and a half, and you could have just written it four and a half too. There's more than one way to approach this. Okay, for now with the banana bread. Good here. This is so exciting. Okay. So this one, how do I make this one adjust to 30 people? Do one half of that one? Yeah. So all of these things I'll have to divide by two. Would have been nice if it was spaced out a little better. Okay, two and a half. If I have half of it, well, I have two things and I have half a thing. And if I'm taking just half of it, then I will fill in one of the two things and just the top part of that. So that's going to turn into, whoops, a quarter. So I'm getting one and a quarter. If the pictures wasn't your idea of fun, then we can do this longer way too. We can say two and a half divided by two. We'll take the two times two is four plus one more makes five halves. And we'll change the two to two over one. Okay, now what do I do? Who remembers dividing fractions? It's been a few days. Should I give it away? I'm drawing a blank. I'm trying to go back to my notes. I can't. So dividing fractions, we flip the second one and multiply. So multiply across the top, five times one is five, multiply across the bottom, two times two is four, and we get the same thing, because one and a quarter is five quarters. Okay, next ingredient. So a teaspoon divided by two is just half a teaspoon.
three quarters a teaspoon divided by two. So I'll put the two over one, then we'll again flip the second one. There's a pattern that you may see. Whenever we divide a fraction by two, then we wind up just doubling the denominator. This two will be a times two, we get four. This four will wind up doing a four times two and get eight. Oh, this is a repeat, three quarters divided by two, three quarters divided by two again, so three eighths cup of sugar, one divided by two, we'll just do a half cup of butter, one divided by two will be a half teaspoon of vanilla, things are too squished over there, I get one egg, and again, three quarters divided by two is three eighths a pound of chocolate chips. Okay, two thirds done, except for the adding them up at the end. Now the sugar cookies. What is our fidget this time? We had a times three, we had a divided by two. Do we add? To make things fit 30 people, we need to multiply or divide by something because we're scaling this up and down. Would it be multiplying by half? If we multiply it by a half, we get 10. We want 30. So times something over two, that's going to get 10. Then I want it three times as big as that to get to 30. So if three halves doesn't make sense, then maybe 1.5 would make sense. We want one of these 20, cop one of the 20 servings and half again as much. So the one for 20 and 0.5 for half as much as 10, or it becomes 10. Should I try explaining that in a different way? If you can, please. Okay, let's try with a picture. So if we have one recipe is 20 people, I want 30 people, so I need another 10. Well, each half of the recipe is 10. So to get 30, I need one copy in its entirety, and then half of another copy. Did the picture help? Yeah, that worked. Thank you. That worked? Okay. So I'm going to multiply all of these by three halves or one and a half. And I'm going to pick the fraction because these are all fractions. Okay, so one and one third, I'm going to write it up here, 
times three halves. How do I change the one and one third into an improper fraction? You'd multiply three by one and add one. Yeah, so I'll wind up with four thirds times three halves. Can I cancel anything? The threes and the two and four. Yeah, the threes cancel. And then the two and four, two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. So I wind up with two times one is two, one times one is one, two over one is two. One half times three halves. So one times three is going to be three. Two times two is going to be four. One quarter times three halves. One times three is three on top. Four times two is eight on the bottom. One egg times three halves. I can't really go to the store and buy half an egg, but since this isn't a terribly realistic problem anyway, I'm just going to keep going and say that we're having three halves of an egg. One half times three halves is again three quarters, teaspoon of vanilla. And one and a half times three halves, we haven't done that one yet. So let's do that over on the side. So one times two is two plus the one on top makes three halves times three halves. Can I cancel anything? No. No. Okay. So going back to look at all of the recipes, we had bananas, we had butter, we had sugar, we have eggs, we have vanilla, we have baking soda, flour, uh, we have salt, sugar, butter, vanilla, we have chocolate chips, sugar, butter, baking soda, okay. So we have to add everything up. So bananas was just in the first one, nine bananas. Butter, we had one cup from this recipe, half a cup from there, and three quarters. So one plus a half plus three quarters. I can change the one to look like a fraction, put it over one. How do I add up these three different fractions? Um, is that a common denominator? Yeah. So it looks like four can work times two and times four. And if I do it to the bottom of a fraction, I have to be fair and do it to the top. So four fourths plus two fourths plus three fourths. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fourths. And that was cups. 
sugar, where were we? Two and three eighths and two. So four and three eighths. Eggs, no, 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 three, one, and three halves. So four plus three halves. I'm gonna take the three halves and make that one and a half. And then the four and the one, the whole numbers combine and I get five and a half eggs. Not sure what I do with the other half an egg, maybe put it in a smoothie later or something. Vanilla, nine quarters, one half, and three quarters. Again, we're adding fractions. So we need common denominators. That two we need to make into a four. If we're doing that on the bottom, we'll be fair, do it on the top. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 fourths. That's a terribly awkward number. How do I make that friendlier? Make it into an improper fraction. Yeah. So I count by fours. 4, 8, 12, so 12 of the fourths is just three holes. And then there was too much, two left over. So if you want, you can write it out. Most people don't, but you could write it out as 12 fourths plus two fourths. And know that the 12 fourths becomes three and the two fourths is one half. Baking soda, three halves, one half, and three eighths. I'm not sure why this one really matters because I don't have a one eighth teaspoon measuring spoon that I would care about for baking soda. It's not going to matter that much, but we'll pretend we care. We need eight as the denominator on all of these things. Doo -doo -doo, make that look like a four. So how many eighths do we have? Three times four is 12. One times four is four. And that three that was there already. So we get 16, 19 eighths. And that should be an equal sign. So just like before, count by fours to change an improper fraction with fourths. We're gonna count by eighths for an improper fraction with eighths. So eight and eight is 16. That's two holes. And then 17, 18, 19 is 3 eighths. And that was terribly uneventful. What we basically did was combine the 3 and the 1 half, and the 3 eighths just confused us and sat up front. OK, flour was the next one. 9 halves, 1 and a quarter, and 9 fourths. Whoever invented this problem liked fiddly things. So I'm going to change the mix number. Um, yeah, I suppose I'll keep doing it this way. I would actually put the one fourth and the nine fourths together, but as long as we're doing it this way, we still will. So 
So nine times two is 18, 23, so 32, am I doing that right? 18, and five more is 23, yeah. So that's just gonna be eight. And salt, no salt there. That's not gonna taste very good. Three eighths and um, that's just three eighths. Okay, yay. And only one of them had chocolate chips, which is a tragedy. <laughs> So three eighths a pound. Tangentially, if you go to our website and go to the syllabus and click on this picture of me, you get to my recipes. So if you want cookies that actually taste good, then there's bunches of cookies, but that's not what we're doing. Okay. So ta-da, we have jumped through the hoops. We have found our shopping list for all three recipes. I did too much talking. I should have asked for you to chime in more, but that was just sort of slow and painful anyway. Questions on any of that? I'm good. None here. Okay, now it is your turn to actually help me. These are much less annoying. How do we deal with these order of operation things? Do we use that um, PEMDIS thing for this? Is that what it's called? Yep, PEMDIS is a good help. Remember when you're doing PEMDIS that addition and subtraction have the same priority and multiplication and division have the same priority. So when that's all that's left, we're just going left to right for those. And also remember that there's a secret F that parentheses and fraction bars are sort of the same things sometimes. We'll get to that later. But we don't need that on this page. So for the first one, two thirds squared, what does the squared mean? multiplied by itself. Yeah, so I can do that. Two thirds times two thirds. As a side note, the reason we have the parentheses is otherwise it would look to, like I'm putting the squared just on the two. And I would do two times itself as four and get four thirds. And that's not what we're doing. So the reason we need the parentheses is to sort of show that this two goes to everything and not just the top. We don't normally put a parentheses around just one number, but this time we did. Okay, after all that fraction warm up we just endured, this should be easy. What's two thirds times two thirds? Four ninths. Four ninths. Ta da, we're done. Okay, the second one. What will I do first? Adding, multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. We talked about terms. If it helps you, you could think about this as. This is a term and this is a term. So we're going to deal with the bigger term first. In any case, I have one fifth. And what is 
off on the side. Three quarters times two fifths. I could multiply straight across, but there might be an easier way to do it. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, so three fourths times two fifths. I could just multiply three times two is six, four times five is 20, but there might be an easier way to do it. Uh, cross cancel the two and four. Yeah. And I would just say cancel. I don't need to say cross cancel. I know some teachers say that, but to me that sounds too much like cross multiplying, which is very different. So three and 10. So all of that goes here, three tenths. Okay, now I want to add things up. How do I add a fifth and three tenths? You need a common di diane, diane, I can't even pronounce it, oh my gosh. Diane. Um, yes. <laughs> so times two makes it a 10, do the same to be fair. Two somethings and three somethings is five of those things. Ta da! Am I done? No. I want to be done, but somebody made this annoying rule you have to reduce your fraction answers. So, one half. Yay, we did it. Okay, number three. This is much quicker. Where do I start for number three? The parentheses. Parentheses. So I'm doing one third and then five plus two is seven. And what arithmetic is hiding in the middle here? Multiplication. Multiplication. So if you haven't seen that before, if you put a number just sort of rubbing up against a parenthesis, there's really a multiplying happening there. Okay, put the seven over one. Let's make that look like a one and seven thirds. Number four, I'll have to do something on the side again. Seven eighths minus one fourth. Do what's in parentheses first. I'm going to wind up with four times something. And I'm probably going to put my four over one. Seven eighths minus a quarter. Where do I go next? I can ask a more specific question. Do I need to change either the eight or the four? The four. The four. When I'm adding or subtracting, I need a common denominator. So I'll put my five eighths here and I can cancel. And it looks like five halves is my answer. Questions about these four? None here. 
is this a good use of class time? Should we do the last three now, or do you want some time over the weekend to try them yourself? I'd like to try them on my own. Okay, so I will just leave this here. You can either click on it in the do, 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 handout links here, or just go to the Jamboard after class and it will be waiting for you. Oh, there's more than three. There's five. I lied. Okay. A word problem. A room measures 20 and a half feet long. I don't know about you, but I would rather write this with the decimals. Is it okay if I change one half to 0.5? Yeah. yeah. And 15 and three quarters feet wide. So same thing. What decimal will I use? Would it be 0.75? Yeah. And if you can't remember that, just do three divided by four on your calculator and it tells you. So we want to find the area and the perimeter. So area, perimeter. So area of a rectangle, what was my formula for that? Length times width. Length times width. Back to our syllabus at the very bottom is our GED stuff. And it includes this formula sheet, the top of which is all of your geometry things. So I will put this in Zoom chat also. If you have a printer at home, they might just want to print out one of these since we're doing geometry stuff anyway. A bunch of this isn't level C, that's okay. Anyway, length times width. So one of these is length, the other is width. It does not matter which is which. 20.5 times 15.75, 322.875. Now, this is a word problem, so I have to think about realism. Do I think I actually know the area to the tenths, hundredths, thousandths of a square foot? I would think, no, my house is not that square, right? My doors don't close perfectly. So I think if you are worrying about how big a room is, rounding to the nearest square foot sounds reasonable. So I will say about 323, rounding the point eight up. Hopefully whoever grades this won't mark me wrong. Okay, perimeter, we're adding up the sides. So some people want to add up four numbers. Other people will go halfway around the shape and then double it. Anyone care which way we do it? Either way works. On the calculator, I will do 15.75 plus 20.5. And then do I have a previous answer? Answer times two. So 73.1. How do I label the perimeter? 73.1. Feet. 
And that one I could round. There's no reason really not to round. But if I have a tape measure and walk around the room, I could measure something to the tenths of a foot. That doesn't 